The holy grail of asset tokenization is liquidity. The main thing that is broken with traditional finance is how hard it is to trade most asset classes, including real estate or private equity. And this is exactly why we are seeing so much enthusiasm about tokenization. However, I'm also observing a bit of naivete, like merely tokenizing is enough to create an active market with huge daily trading volume. I wish it was so, but the reality is a bit more complicated. So if you are one of the forward-thinking pioneers who wants to move to the financial rails of the 21st century, you need a strategy to get most out of tokenization. You need to know how exactly your tokens are going to be traded, how do you incentivize trading, and how much liquidity do you even need? How do you budget this in your initial offering? And these are some of the questions we're going to be discussing in the next two videos. This is part one, when I'll discuss three ways in which your tokens can be traded. In part two, I'll discuss questions such as incentivizing trading and how much liquidity do you actually need. The three approaches that we're going to be discussing in these videos are peer-to-peer -peer trading, listing on a centralized exchange, and the most disruptive one, listing on a decentralized exchange. So stay until the end of the video if you want to understand how much of a game changer this really is. Dear viewers, welcome to Stopbox Insights. We are one of the most experienced teams in the space of tokenizing real-world assets, with dozens of projects completed in all five jurisdictions in very different industries, including real estate and private equity and tech startups and crypto mining, manufacturing, natural resources, anything you can basically imagine. We've worked with small businesses and with multi-billion dollar enterprises, so we see in real time how the market is developing and all the newest trends and approaches. So if you want to keep up with the market, if you want to stay ahead of competition and be among the first to leverage this exciting technology, subscribe and watch other videos on this channel. And now let's proceed to the main discussion. The first approach we are discussing is peer-to-peer -peer trading, which is basically private trading between two individuals or entity. It is me coming to you and telling, hey, I've got some tokens in this new hot startup which I'd like to sell to you, we'd like to buy them. And we negotiate the price, we negotiate the terms, and I transfer you the tokens. This can be done in a, a bit more sophisticated manner, as it doesn't require me going to my circle of friends and associates in order to do it. There can be a bulletin board, an online forum, when we post offers to buy or sell the tokens at a given price, and then when somebody becomes interested in our offer, they contact us, we negotiate, and we settle the transaction. This method doesn't fully leverage all the benefits of blockchain technology, so it doesn't have these automated fast transactions and price discovery, but it still enables at least some form of trading, because now you have fast settlement and possibility to do the transfer in an easy manner without involvement of lawyers and notaries and high transaction costs. Now you can find counterparties for your trade online, and there are more of them, because as the asset is fractionalized, there are more people who can potentially buy it and who already hold it and might want to increase their holding. One of the primary benefits of this approach is that there is almost no cost involved in its setup. You don't need to get approval to become a public company, any kinds of complex regulations, you don't need to go and pay listing fees to anybody, you can literally use a telegram chat in order to enable such kind of trading. And therefore, if you're a small cap issuer or you're only starting and want to check if trading is something that you might need, this is a good option for you. Peer-to-peer -peer trading known in the traditional market as an OTC trading that is over the counter is also critical for large transactions because even if you are listed in exchanges and you have a large market, if somebody wants to liquidate, let's say, 5%, 10% of the total volume, this is 
still going to be challenging because with such a large transaction they are very likely to move the price which is bad for them because they are selling at a lower price than they could have otherwise and this is bad for everybody else because the price of the token is going down so instead of going and liquidating their holding on an open market they can do it privately by finding another large buyer so especially if you have whales which you probably have if you had some large investors in the early stage or if you generally had a small offering when you have let's say a few dozen holders who all hold large chunks then peer-to-peer -peer trading is the best way to create liquidity for your purchasers and notice that actually it's not mutually exclusive with other approaches to trading so you can still have peer-to-peer -peer trading working alongside other types of trading for higher convenience of large buyers or sellers. Now let's proceed to discussing centralized exchanges. And this is in some sense the most standard approach to creating liquidity that is done on traditional markets. When large companies like you know Google, Apple go to Nasdaq or New York Stock Exchange and get their shares offered to all kinds of investors. And in the crypto world, there are many exchanges that have a similar function, such as Binance, Coinbase, etc. Though one crucial point to recognize is that most likely, if you're issuing a token that is backed by real-world assets, this token is gonna be regulated as security in the vast majority of jurisdictions. And tokens that are securities can be listed only on exchanges that have licenses to trade securities. And most big crypto exchanges, such as the ones I mentioned previously, don't have such licenses. So you can get your tokens listed there legally. Instead, there are many specialized exchanges for tokenized securities in different parts of the world. You have T0 and Oasis Pro Market and INX Limited in the United States. You have Archox in the United Kingdom. You have Aceterra in Europe, ADDX in Singapore, and several more others. Interestingly, we actually see REA tokens from time to time listed on conventional crypto exchanges. And this is very clearly illegal. Most likely, neither these exchanges nor the issues don't realize that they are violating the legislation. And most likely, the regulators in those respective jurisdictions haven't yet noted that such violation is happening. So there is a gray zone in which some REA assets can be listed on conventional crypto exchanges. But these aren't top tier exchanges. These are sometimes tier two, tier three exchanges. And most likely, this loophole will be closed in the next few years so we strongly discourage you from pursuing this strategy at the least because this is a very direct violation of securities legislation in the vast majority of jurisdictions. The benefits and drawbacks of being listed on centralized exchanges are pretty straightforward. On one hand, you create a very simple user experience for your investors who often don't even need a wallet, who simply go, purchase, click buy and sell, and the trade is settled, the price is determined automatically, they don't need to negotiate with anybody. And additionally, those exchanges have some communities, some investors who are regularly purchasing and selling assets there, so you get higher exposure for your tokens. One point to notice, is that these exchanges don't yet have communities that are very diverse and developed. So you don't need to fully rely on them. And the main responsibility for creating liquidity and promoting your offering still remains on you. Another drawback you should be aware of is that many such exchanges don't even accept retail investors yet. So there might be a bit better option if you target primarily institutional accredited investors. And if you have a large offering, this is probably exactly who you're gonna be going to. Because closing a large offering like 50 million, 100 million with retail investors only is almost impossible or at least really really challenging. I have another video about choosing target audience of investors which I really encourage you to check out if you want to dive deeper into this topic. Another reason 
why listing on centralized exchanges is a bit more feasible for large companies and offerings is because in many jurisdictions you would need to become a public company in order to get listed on such a regulated exchange. And this involves a long process of getting approval, it creates a need for continuous reporting and audits and internal controls, and this creates quite a significant cost in hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars depending on the complexity of your operations. So it's definitely justified given some volume because you won't simply be able to raise capital without promising liquidity to your investors. However, many of our clients are much smaller enterprises and this isn't simply feasible for you. And this is where decentralized trading comes into play. But before we proceed, if you find this video useful or intriguing or even just entertaining, please give it a like in order to help us get higher exposure. Okay, so what even is a decentralized exchange? Instead of thinking about them as actual exchanges, I prefer to perceive them primarily as technical protocols. because. In a standard exchange, you have this complex organization where all the tokens are listed together with compliance and operations and all that set up. In a decentralized exchange, what you have is a technical protocol which you can use to create your own exchange, basically. Anyone can pick a trading pair and use this technology, which is called automated market making protocol in order to create a trading pair and allow people to come and buy and sell these tokens. And this is what leads to these crucial benefits of lower regulatory requirements. And I need to be fully transparent with you that regulation of decentralized exchanges is a delicate topic which isn't clearly defined in any jurisdiction we are aware of yet. However, what we are observing is that Almost everyone who is listed on decentralized exchanges doesn't have prospectus approval or any other kind of regulation. So most of these tokens are still private companies without complicated reporting that are, however, listed and traded by their investors within certain compliance rules and exemptions according to the securities law. And this is what is so revolutionary about decentralized exchanges, because you can access all the benefits and trading experience of centralized exchanges without going through this complex regulatory process. This is true democratization, when the liquidity, the holy grail of tokenization becomes much more broadly available to all kinds of companies. And this is what makes it feasible to invest in smaller companies, because as an investor you know you will be able to exit when you need. And so we redirect huge amount of capital into small and medium enterprises, into severely undercapitalized sectors of economy. Let's discuss in a bit more detail how do decentralized exchanges work. And the primary concept for this is liquidity pool. Because each time you want to create a trading pair, let's say between your security token and a stable coin, let's say USDT, you create a liquidity pool out of these two assets. The way in which you can imagine it is a literal pool, or even a better way as two jars. And these two jars are filled with these assets. So let's say you have 100,000 uh, security tokens and 100,000 USDT deposited into the pool. Now imagine someone wants to purchase 10,000 tokens. In this case, I would take 10,000 tokens from the pool and put $10,000. And now you have 90,000 tokens in one jar and 110,000 tokens in the second jar, which is USDT. And so if previously the price was $1 per token, now you have $1.22 per token because of the new ratio. And alternatively, if I want to sell 10,000 tokens, I would put them into the jar and take 10,000 USDT from another jar. What this means is that liquidity pool becomes a central counterparty to each trade. In the peer-to-peer -peer market, you need to find other investors to whom you would sell tokens or from whom you will buy them, and you can wait like two weeks, two months until somebody appears. 
Here, the liquidity pool serves as an intermediary who buys tokens from those who want to sell and sell them to those who want to buy. This model is what creates a user experience that is very similar to the one of centralized exchanges and much more comfortable for the majority of users. But obviously, there are also drawbacks associated with it. One is that unlike centralized exchanges, DAXs don't have communities and cannot offer you a promotion. So this is something you will need to handle completely on yourself using, of course, partners, marketing agencies, etc. Though it should be noted that providers of such solutions are working on creating communities and helping you with the promotion, so this might change in the near future. Another unique feature of decentralized exchanges is that you need to deposit the liquidity. So you need to issue and deposit these, let's say, 10,000, 100,000 tokens, and the same with dollars or USDT. Typically, the amount that you need to deposit is about 10% of your market capitalization. So, if the market cap of your token is a million, you would need to deposit $100,000 or $50,000 to enable a smooth trading experience without high volatility. And this might seem actually quite steep and less attractive than some offers even from centralized exchanges who might say that the cost of listing and listing fees are, let's say, 25000 a year. But think about it from this perspective. With a centralized exchange, you spend this money. With a decentralized exchange, you deposit it. So you still own these 100000 And therefore, in five years, in six years, the total cost of maintaining a DEX might end up being lower. And you also can make it in a dynamic way. That is, you can increase or decrease liquidity depending on how the market operates. If your token grows and many people want to buy it, they would deposit more USDT into the pool and you can pull the liquidity away from it if you need. So it actually offers you more flexibility if you need. And at the first glance, it might actually seem less attractive. Some centralized exchanges, for example, might charge $25,000 listing fees and then, let's say, $20,000 annual fees. But there is one crucial difference. With listing fees, the money is spent. With liquidity pool, the money is deposited. So you don't actually spend it. And in several years, you will have spent more in listing fees than in keeping your funds locked in the liquidity pool. Additionally, you can dynamically adjust the liquidity by increasing or decreasing the supply depending on your needs and the market situation. On top of that, if your token grows and becomes attractive, people want to purchase it. And in order to do it, they need to withdraw security tokens from the pool and deposit USDT sometimes allowing you to withdraw the USDT that you yourself deposited, in this way actually coming on top financially compared to the listing on centralized exchanges. At this point, you might be asking, if this is my own exchange and if I deposit liquidity into it, shouldn't I be able to collect transaction fees to make it even more financially attractive for me? And the answer is, it's not that simple. And this demonstrates this delicate regulatory situation with decentralized exchanges. In order to collect transaction fees, most likely you will need a broker-dealer license because in this way, a part of your business will be making money from facilitating transactions with securities, which is exactly what broker-dealers do. And the problem with it is that getting a broker-dealer license is even more expensive than becoming a public company. So if you are already a licensed entity, this may be a very good way to make additional money. But if you are a standard issuer, this is not the best approach to pursue. So here they are, three ways in which you can create trading market for your tokens and fulfill your promise to investors of creating an easy way to exit for them. If you're interested in additional considerations, such as how do you actually incentivize your investors to trade, stay tuned for part two, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss that video. Lastly, if you're interested in conducting tokenization 
or listing your security tokens or in a technology platform to do the sale of tokens, reach out to me directly via my email bp at stopbox.io or go to our website stopbox.io and fill in the form to get a free consultation because we do provide consulting and guidance to issuers, we do provide a platform and a technology to issue token and we also have ourselves a decentralized exchange for tokenized security so we can help you with all aspects of the process with full life cycle of your tokenized securities. I'm really grateful if you stayed until the end and I really hope I'll see you in the next episode.